Hello there, my name is Brent, and behind me is the abandoned mining town of Cerro Gordo. And for the past two years or so, this ghost town has been my home, where I spent my days exploring the mines, going on hikes, restoring the old buildings, and just trying to bring life back to this forgotten town. And just about two years ago, we lost the old hotel to a fire. And pretty much every day since, I have been dedicated, obsessed even, with rebuilding this building. You know, rebuilding anything up here at 8,500 feet at the end of a seven mile dirt road is very difficult. We've had a lot of hurdles, but I'm excited to say this thing's back on track. So in this video, we're gonna talk American Hotel and everything going on with it. All right, so right now we are in Cerro Gordo, California. And this town was originally established as the mining town back in 1865, and it grew to be the largest silver mine in California. You know, at its peak, there was 4,000 residents here and close to 500 buildings. And unfortunately, over the last 150 years, the majority of these buildings have been lost to weather, reuse, and fires. The most recent of which happened in June of 2020, which took the American Hotel here. And the American Hotel was originally built in 1871, and in many ways, it was the heart of this town. And to lose it has been among the most devastating things I've ever gone through. The building has been way more difficult than I could ever imagine. But that is why I'm more excited than ever to say that most of that is behind us. We have the green light to build this thing and close it and get it ready for winter. So that way, if it does snow, we can keep working. So that way, this time next year, I'm sitting here and we have a hotel up and maybe ready. You know, that would just be a beautiful thing to me. So this video is gonna go through what's been going on up here over the last few months and uh, what the plan is for the rest of the year related to the rebuilding of the American Hotel. The American Hotel, originally built in 1871 and it's pretty much everybody's favorite building here on site. It is the home of our saloon. After a long day's work in the mines, miners would come in, check in there, they would get a beer here. Over here is the card room. This is the infamous bolt hole in the wall and blood stain on the floor. So this is an update that I've been waiting a very long time to give. Right now, I am sitting in what will become the basement of the American Hotel. This thing right here is the edge of a stairwell. And if you look, there is block up, there is cement poured in this block, and the next flight is going up shortly. You know, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that my main goal, above and beyond any other project that we work on here, any mine exploration, any anything, is the rebuilding of the American Hotel. You know, in June of 2020, we tragically lost the hotel to a fire. And pretty much every day since, I've thought about rebuilding. You know, back then, it was the most devastating thing that happened. You know, it was a traumatic experience that just taxed me emotionally, physically, mentally, and the trauma related to it is something I still kind of deal with now. And I remember right after the fire happened, kind of the turning point for me was I was standing just above the hotel site and I was looking at the ashes and there's still smoke coming out. And the old owner came up to me, put his hand on my shoulder. You know, I didn't know who it was. I turned around, he gave me a big hug, you know, and I remember he said, listen, sometimes these things are inevitable. You can't change anything that happened, but what happens from here is up to you. You know, it was more than just some comforting words. It was this call to action. It was, what are you going to do about it? You know, no amount of hiding in my room or just being sad about it was going to change the fact that it was gone, but I could change what happens from there. And so my priorities and basically my whole life changed to rebuilding this thing. But then we hit the first hiccup. And that was a massive concrete problem. The footings called for about 80 yards of concrete to be poured. And uh, that's about 10 concrete trucks full. And our road to get here is a seven mile steep dirt road with switchbacks and everything else. So that sent me on a path for about six months of banging my head against the wall and just trying to get anybody to come up here and pour concrete. You know, I tried all the local companies. I tried further away things. I was looking into renting these massive trucks. Uh, I even called a helicopter company that quoted me $167,000 for a day. And that is when a lot of you guys that watch this channel 
told me that I should reach out to a guy named Heavy D or Dave Sparks. I mean, a lot of his people said that he should come over here. And you know, I didn't know Dave at all, but I could tell from day one that he is just as solid a dude as they come. You know, he came up here, we walked around the site, we had a good time, we looked into some mines, and he said, what's your biggest problem? And I said, I need 81 yards of concrete delivered here. And he had just seen the road. I remember he kind of looked around and he said, all right, I got you, you know? And a number of weeks later, Dave arrived with just an enormous amount of machinery. You know, we're talking excavators, we're talking loaders, we're talking a front-loaded cement truck that if you were to look at it, there's no way that you think it should make it up this road. We came together with a plan that we were gonna mix and pour all the concrete on site. That meant getting these super sacks of cement, which are 3,000 pounds each. They hold one yard. They're these yellow bags that weigh 3,000 pounds. We need 80 of those to get up here. And if I think about my favorite days in my two, two and a half years up at Cerro Gordo, the day that we poured the footings is probably, if not the top day, the top three for sure. You know, it was just this beautiful moment of everybody coming together for a common goal and getting it done. You know, I remember just even being exhausted as we were, just smiling ear to ear about what we did. Because it really truly felt like history in the making. And the next step after that, uh, after the footings down, was block. And so about 4,000 of these, or about 60 pallets of block, needed to come up next. They would be delivered in unwrapped pallets at which point they needed to be forklifted off of their truck and forklifted on something else. We loaded and unloaded these one by one all the way up here. So every single one of these blocks behind me that you see has been touched by so many humans just bringing it up here. Then I found a local Mason, uh, Shane, so shout out Shane and his crew. And so over the course of a week or so, Shane and his guys put up all this block. Um, they did an amazing job and unfortunately, Right around that time, we ran into some other hiccups as well. Uh, we ran into the winter, and the enemy of concrete is cold weather, and we definitely get cold weather up here. At the same time, we needed to get some sprinkler plans approved and different things. But now, I am very excited that all of that is behind us. We have our approved plans in hand, and we are rocking and rolling. All right, so before we go down there today and hopefully finish up this basement, I wanna give you an idea of what we're finishing on the plans and what this hotel is going to look like in total when we're done. So right now, this set of the plans is showing you the basement. This is the front, so this is where if you walk down the path, you're walking by here, and this will be the entrance. But as we look through this, you'll see the foundation that we're building. You see the stairwell in the back. Those are the two walls that are very close to each other. This is going to be a speakeasy. As you move up to the first floor, you would enter through here. There'll be the lobby here. This will be a little area. Over here says dining room. This will actually be more of a museum. I want to put stuff for people to learn a little bit more about Cerro Gordo here. As you move over here, we're going to have the bar. The bar that was in the hotel before was actually built in the 90s by a guy that still lives around here. And he's going to rebuild that bar as it was. And then if you were to go upstairs, there will be six rooms. And so all six of these rooms uh, will have views out into Owens Valley over the deck. If we go over here, this will give you a quick glance at what the hotel will look like from the outside. You know, very similar to how it did before, if you remember. So when we get done with all this, seven, that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. To get there, we need to build a basement first. And so today we are going to go go to the basement. Today, we are pouring cement once again. We are pouring the first flight of the basement. So the CMU or the block is up already. And now we need to pour all those cells to make it a solid wall. We have a big crew coming. We have the mason coming. We have a s multiple cement trucks coming. We have a cement pump coming. Uh, we have a bunch of volunteers here to help out with all of that. It's gonna be a good day. I'm excited to finally see it moving again. It's really special to me, and so I hope you guys like it too. One of the benefits of Dave showing that this was possible to bring cement up here was that it loosened up some of the local companies to come up. 
So I gotta give a huge shout out to 7-Eleven too. They're a local company that's always super busy. I know there's easier jobs. I know there's safer jobs, but I think they just care about this place coming back to life as well. So they were able to bring their truck up. Um, Shane arranged a pump to come as well. And we pumped another 15 yards of concrete into these cells. All right, so as you can see, day as we go, we got the concrete truck up here. We have the pump over here because we have to use a pump to get it into all the different corners. We got some final tie-ins that we're doing. And so today, we're pouring all the cells to make it a solid wall. I'm excited, you know, it's kind of like finally start looking like the full basement, which is pretty sweet. All right, so we're moving scaffolding because we're going to start pouring out of the pump at this control joint here. And then it's going to go that way. And so hopefully we have 15 yards. All right, and in this video, something you'll see all around this construction site is Element. And Element has been sending Cerro Gordo these electrolyte packets for the last two years. I love this stuff. I carry it with me pretty much everywhere. If you remember the salt tram hike where I got into a little bit of trouble, Element is probably the reason that I hiked my way out of that situation. All the guys at the construction site have been using it. It's great. It has no sugar, no artificial colorings, you know, just electrolytes. And this brand has been a huge supporter of the town and of this project. So I hope you support them. And right now, if you go to Drink Element, so drinklmnt.com slash Brent, they're giving away eight free packets with any purchase. So go check it out. I love this stuff. I carry it around with me everywhere. And we've been using it a ton on the rebuilding of the American Hotel. All right, so front wall, side wall, all these back walls are done. We're kind of coming up to the end of it. The game plan then would be, you know, let this settle. Then after this, go up their next flight, get that inspected, and then pour that in a similar way. What do you think, Greg? I'm a damn electrician, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so we got all of these poured to where they need to be for the next flight or lift, and then it's gonna be up with the next side of box. So, hey, everyone made it happen. It's a good day. You know, so at this point, this wall is as solid as it's gonna get. And it was just so exciting to remember how difficult it was the first time, and how, how much simpler it seemed the second time. I think that's the thing with these big projects. You know, when you tackle something big, sometimes it just, calls out the best of you and it calls out the best of other people you know they also want to see what they can do you know they want to participate in these big lofty goals and i think the american hotel is that all right so matt yeah you helped put out the forms now you're seeing the basement going up yeah uh how excited are you to see this thing kind of come to life oh i'm super excited i mean i've i've already seen so much progress just in my short time this year yeah and i mean if we continue down that route i mean i think we should have it done soon. I'm hoping to grab a zero in the saloon once it's, you know, all over, you know? You know, this has been taking so long, you might be actually able to get a regular view by the time this thing is <laughs> hey, done. Hey, there's a chance, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So as we're putting up this block, we need more mortar, the stuff that goes in between the block. And so two pallets were delivered earlier down in Keeler. That's pretty much as far as any of these companies will take any supplies. Uh, we also need some more water to continue on the progress. So buckle up, because we're getting in the five ton and that is always an adventure. The road to Cerro Gordo definitely isn't an easy one. You know, for the past 150 years, people have struggled to just get themselves to the town site, let alone anything else. The ore deposits up here are at 8,500 feet in the mountains. And to get here, the miners made a long, twisting, turning dirt road that goes along cliffs, through narrow sections, and increases almost a mile in elevation. This road has been notoriously bad since the early days when the wagons would break down all the time. But still, you know, despite all of that, they managed to build this town for thousands way up in the hills. So as construction ramped up this month, I found myself once again needing to get a lot of heavy materials a long way up our dirt road. And luckily, I wasn't relying on mules to get all those materials up. You know, a few months ago, Dave Sparks dropped off just an amazing five-ton military truck. And from moving millions of pounds of cement to block 
to the water to bring it all together, this truck has handled it all. You know, and each run down the hill still feels long to me and moving everything from the bottom to the construction site still takes more time than I want. But whenever I get frustrated, I try to remember that this whole town is built by mules. You know, if they could do that 150 years ago with the resources they have, we can certainly do it today with this beast of a truck. All right, so while we're filling up that, uh, this is Keeler. And if you could tell, it's a lot cleaner than it used to be. And there used to be old trailers back here. Now there's a new trailer. So we're building a little bit of a compound train right here. Now we have this little resting area, TV, books, seating, water, and the most important two things in here now, washer, dryer. So now instead of having your Lone Pine, you can do it right here and Ta-da! A shower. So, come out here. And you see even, and then over there is a trailer. So if we have guests now, and they don't wanna go up there, this is kind of the staging area. They can stay here. All right, so in the trailer, come in. Got a little of this there. It's old, but it'll work. You know, sometimes I just need a night off the hill, and this'll be it. This is, uh, instead of getting a hotel room, you know, just come down here, hang out. Relax. So this is the Keeler spot these days. A lot different than it was when I first got here, but. A little paint job on the outside. Load up the five ton. We made it back, five ton is safely back at Cerro Gordo. All of the mortars brought up there. I was thinking about every single one of these blocks had to be hand loaded down in Keeler, brought up on the five ton or a different truck, and then placed by hand in a part of the structure that nobody's ever gonna see. You know, and there's, there's two thoughts I get when I think about that. One, it's, you know, it gives me such a greater appreciation for everything that they did back in the day here. You know, when you look at an old photo of Cerro Gordo and there's hundreds of buildings, every bit of those buildings, you know, whether it was the floor, the ceiling, the shingles, the nails, all had to be brought up. And that was a five ton truck with mules. You know, so it just gives you such a great appreciation for the determination that they got here. And so I think sometimes when you think about these projects, you think about the hotel, and you think about it in total, it can be overwhelming. You know, it's like we have to get 80 yards of concrete up here. We have to get 5,000 blocks up here. We have to get all of this rebar up here. We have to get all this wood up here. It can be overwhelming. But if each day you kind of do a little bit of it, you know, today we brought up 20 bags of mortar and you put enough of those days together, you know, you link enough of those days, big projects get done. All right guys, so as these things happen sometimes, you know, we're a little short of masons today and progress on the hotel is just so important to me. It's been something that I've been looking forward to so much that I wanna go help, you know? So I'm gonna go down there, see if Shane will uh, show me how to lay some block and then get to it, you know? It's kind of my mentality always is to get after it when I can and just masonry is not something that I've ever learned, but Shane is, uh, Licensed Mason, that's what he does for a living. So if he could teach a green guy to at least put up some, I'm happy to help. And uh, you know, I'd learn a new thing in the process, which is kind of a win-win to me. So I offered to jump in and help. And I gotta say, there is a lot more that goes into laying block than I thought. It's hard, and I think doing even one little row just gave me such a greater appreciation for the work these guys were doing. You know, it's that old adage of putting yourself in someone else's shoes. I try to do that whenever I can. You know, it helps me better understand. I don't think I'm gonna be building a basement anytime soon, but I think now if I need to put up a little retaining wall, I at least know where to start. And I think of all the things I've learned over the past two years from heavy machinery, to framing, to forging, to now a little bit of masonry. And I can only imagine what the next two or 20 years holds, you know, it's really exciting to think about.
All right, so let me give you guys a little bit of a tour of what the basement will be like. We're in the back right corner right now. And so off of this will be a big wooden deck that will overlook the whole valley, which will have beautiful views. But down in the basement, this will be kind of where all the supplies are brought in back here. And then as we go over, you know, this will be the mechanical room. So imagine washer dryer, pump, anything like that that needs to go in here will go there. This will be the first kind of just storage area. I imagine this will have a lot of refrigerators, things like that things for the kitchen because right above us will be the kitchen and we're kind of at the grade that the first floor will be way up here so if we jump down here this second area will be kind of the storage area these will all be some piers that we need to pour when we do the next lift back here's a stairwell so you're looking inside the stairwell that'll get up to the first floor as you go over here this front storage area i'd love to make into some kind of cool hangout spot it's, you know sometimes speakeasy type vibe up here you know down over here obviously above this will be the card room but maybe if there's some type of entrance from above down into here and then down into there that'd be cool but you know standing in here right now obviously the wall is much above what i can reach so it feels like an actual room you know and so to have this feeling again here at the american hotel is beautiful you know i never knew how much went into the buildings that we walk through every day. I think that level of appreciation is something that I always try to take away here at Cerro Gordo is how much work goes into everything. You know, like when I was refining the silver or the mining or, you know, building anything. I don't know that anybody will appreciate this hotel more than me when it's done, but it's definitely given me a huge eye-opening to what goes into these things. And so with this basement kind of coming together, it should be done this next week after this next round of block is put up, just finishing it up, is gonna come the fire sprinkler system. And obviously fire sprinklers are very important for the reason that the original hotel was lost. And here in California, you need a system that's able to run for 60 minutes straight without stopping. And if you were to do the math on that, that comes out to about 38,000 gallons of water that we need here at all times to support the sprinkler systems of this hotel. And so with that, we're gonna need some very, very big tanks. We're talking about 40,000 gallons worth of water in tanks that we're gonna put just above the hotel site up there. So, so there's gonna be some gravity feed. And when I was looking into these tanks, these tanks can be up to like 30 feet long and 10 feet wide, so they're massive. And that leads to the question of how are we gonna get these massive tanks up here? And that leads me again to somebody that you all may know, Dave Sparks. Dave and I have been talking over the last few weeks, and I think now that this is getting close, it's time for me to call Dave again, let him know that, hey, let's rock and roll. It sounds like a logistical nightmare, and my mind immediately jumps to Dave Sparks and stuff. So. Yeah, dude, I mean, based off of that, it's, that's definitely right up our alley, and I'd say we're in 100%. Yeah, well, man, you know, having you in my corner has been uh, one of my great reliefs here at Cerro Gordo. So I, I appreciate it as always. And uh, more than anything else, I was just looking for an excuse to get you guys back down here. So I'm looking forward to hanging out again. We've been looking for an excuse to be back down there too. And uh, you know, we're always up for an adventure. So we appreciate the opportunity. And uh, like I said, we're in, let's make it happen. All right. Hell yeah, man. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Okay, brother. Perfect. Right now it is June of 2022. And if we can get the basement done this month, that would be huge. But if that's the case, my real goal, my goal now beyond all this else, because all the red tape is gone, is to get this building up, framed up and enclosed by the winter. And I know when these projects start, it's very exciting to be like, oh, we'll get it done in a year. I, I fell victim to that too. I was like, we'll have it done in a year. That has been the case. But now seeing that this thing is rising, it is coming to life, has given me that motivation again, just to crank away. Sitting here now, you know, with the first flight up, just makes me thankful. You know, it makes me thankful for every one of you guys watching this. You know, whether you're here moving blocks or just watching from home, this channel is what make, is making this hotel possible. And I think given how polarizing things can be online sometimes, the fact that everybody drops all that and just focuses on a love of history is a beautiful thing. 
So I thank you guys so, so much for checking this out. As we get this thing up, I hope more and more of you come. I hope one day, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people are able to come through this hotel, sit on the porch and just enjoy a drink and enjoy the beauty and the magic that's here every single day. And all that will have to be possible because of this channel. Stay tuned for a lot more updates. And until then, I hope you all have an amazing week and uh, we'll be back very soon with the next update of the American Hotel.